Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is Seeds of Opportunity. People loved not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they loved the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used parables as a way to help his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that needed to change. Last week, we explored the parable of the two debtors. Jesus told this parable while having dinner at Simon the Pharisee's home, where he was an invited guest. Simon neglected to show Jesus normal Eastern hospitality by washing his feet. Instead, an uninvited woman entered Simon's home, fell at the feet of Jesus, and washed his feet with her hair. Simon and all the guests were shocked by her act of generosity. This led Jesus to tell the parable of the two debtors. Simon and his friends thought they were better than everyone else. And so Jesus used this parable to teach those present that people who lived a sinful life before turning to Jesus to be forgiven end up loving God much more. The parable ends with these powerful words. He who is forgiven much loves much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. Luke chapter 7, verse 47. One of the most famous parables that Jesus told is the parable of the seeds. It is the story of a farmer who plants seed on a variety of different soils. Here is how Luke recorded the story. And when a great crowd gathered and people from town after town came to hear him, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow seed, and as he sowed, some fell on the path, and it was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. And some fell on rock, and it grew up. It withered because it had no moisture. And some fell on thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it out. And some fell on good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. Luke chapter 8, verse 4 through 8. I'm sure that when Jesus finished this story, many in the crowd who were listening to him were howling with laughter. They were saying to each other, what kind of crazy farmer would plant seed on the road, the rocks, and in thorns? No wise farmer would waste precious seed by planting it where it does not have a chance of growing. And that is exactly the reaction that Jesus was looking for. He used stories like this to help identify the ones who were open to hear his message. Those who were open to his message asked questions about the deeper meaning of the story. And those who did not want to hear the message found an excuse to walk away and to reject Jesus. Every week as I share messages about the life and sayings of Jesus, that is exactly what happens to me. Some get the message and ask for more, and others, looking for a reason to criticize the message, try to warn others not to listen to me. This is how Jesus put it. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Luke chapter 8 and verse 8. Do you have ears to hear the story about this generous farmer? What did you learn from this story? The disciples wanted to discover the deeper meaning of the story, so they asked Jesus what the parable meant. Jesus replied, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom. Luke chapter 8, verse 8. Would you like to have the privilege of knowing the secrets of the kingdom? If you ask, Jesus will tell you. Jesus said, the seed is the word of God. Luke chapter 8, verse 11. This means that the story that Jesus told has nothing to do with farming. 
The story is about our reaction to receiving the gift of the Word of God. We receive the Word of God in the form of a tiny seed. We get the seed, but not the tree. It's good to know that all of God's seeds grow. He does not have any bad seeds that won't germinate. Every one of God's seeds is ready to grow. The success of the seed has everything to do with where it lands. The landing spot determines if there will be a crop. Now, unlike the earthly farmers, Jesus extravagantly sows seed everywhere, every day. Jesus has an unlimited supply of seed. Jesus sows seeds of opportunity around the world every day. He is sowing seed into your life right now. And your reaction to his seed is a reflection of the condition of the soil in your heart. Jesus said, unprepared hearts, or like the seed that fell on the path, that they are those who heard, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Luke chapter 8, and verse 12. Jesus said, shallow hearts are like the seed on the rock. They are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy, but they have no root, and they believe for a while, and then in a time of testing, they fall away. Luke chapter 8 and verse 13. Jesus said, distracted hearts are like seeds that fell among the thorns, and those who hear them. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. Luke chapter 8, verse 14. Jesus said, productive hearts are the seeds that land on good soil, and these are the ones who, after hearing the word, cling to it with an honest and good heart and bear fruit with steadfast endurance. Luke chapter 8 and verse 15. Now, by now, it must be obvious that Jesus was not talking about farming or regular farmers. In this story, Jesus is the one who is sowing seed. Jesus is the farmer. And every single day, Jesus drops seeds as an idea. Every day, Jesus gives everyone ideas that will help us come closer to God. Ask Jesus to open your ears to hear an idea right now that will help you grow spiritually. Ask Jesus for wisdom or for direction. Ask him to help you understand why he came to earth as a baby. There's a mystery. Ask him why he had to suffer death on the cross at the hands of the Romans. Another mystery. Ask him to help you understand why he suffered for you. Every day, Jesus speaks to people who are completely opposed to his message. He opens their eyes and their ears to receive the message that he brings. Today, you have the opportunity to laugh at the story or to open your heart to discover the secrets of the seed. God has just given you what you need for today. But this gift is in the form of a seed. It needs to be cultivated. One simple step that you can take is to write to me and ask me for a Bible so you can read the Word of God for yourself in your own language. The Bible was written by the breath of God, but more importantly, it is protected by the power of God. The seeds that Jesus plants are all good, And they can all grow when they are planted in hearts ready to receive them. I want to take a few moments and pray for you. God, I thank you for the precious people listening to this story. God, I thank you what has been planted in hearts today as people have listened. Cause a seed of hope to grow for a new opportunity to come. Thank you, Lord, for seeds 
that are leading in a new direction give people insight on the next step that they should take. Help people to choose the straight path, the path that leads to the blessing of heaven. Father, I pray for those who are seeking provision. Open the eyes to see that you are dropping seeds of understanding on how to receive your blessing. Father, I pray for those who need a healing today. A seed of healing is being offered to all who are listening. If you need healing, just say with me, Jesus, heal me by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, touch people right now. Cancer, go in the name of Jesus. Eyes be opened in the name of Jesus. Ears be opened in the name of Jesus. Lame, get up and walk in the name of Jesus. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior, today could be your day to accept the seed of salvation that Jesus has already planted in your heart. It's there right now. Say with me. Jesus, thank you for dying for me and my place on the cross so that I can become a child of God and be forgiven for all of my sins. If you just took this step, write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. Next week, we'll continue studying the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International, Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with Living Hope.